Today on the Ask Brady Show, we talk about the new, scary, Facebook apocalyptic algorithm update of 2018 and Roxanne Curses. Well, well, hey there! And welcome to the Ask Brady Show, episode number 50. We've got four great questions from the people of Pro Church Nation, and I'm joined, as always, to my left, your right, it is Roxanne. It's true. True it is, behind the camera, the editing wizard himself, Joe Nex. And the man with the cam, Alex Mills. Thanks. It's not really as special as it sounds, because I work here, but I'm here. Roxanne, take us away with the first question on this 50th episode, please. All right. First question comes from Chris, and he sent in a video. Hey, Brady and Roxanne and the whole Pro Church Nation. My name is Pastor Chris Hines from Paradise Foursquare Church in Northern California. I had a question as it relates to subtitles on videos. We post a lot of videos to Facebook, and I know that you've mentioned um, subtitle companies, and I know how important they are because I know for me with three young kids, I don't watch videos with the volume on often. A lot of the times it is with the subtitles. I was wondering, are there any companies that you know that offer uh, free or really low cost um, subtitle availability? And if so, I would really love to know it. We want to say thank you to everything that you guys do. We love you and appreciate you and um, love what you're doing for the kingdom of God. I hope you're having a great day and a happy new year. Bye-bye. Thanks for the question, Chris. You're not alone. Even though you have kids, I've seen reports up to 80% of Facebook videos that are watched with the sound off. And those come from, you know, individual brands that have looked at their own data and found how many videos are being watched without sound, you know, from 50 to 80%. So that is a ton. Captions, especially on Facebook, are so important if we want our videos that we've worked so hard on producing to be seen. And I don't know about you, but I'm one of those weirdos that just likes captions. Like, we saw The Darkest Hour yesterday in theaters, final day before it left, wanted to get that in before, you know, Oscar buzz and all that comes out. Yeah. And it had been a little while since I'd watched a video in a theater, and there was no captions. And... As much as the actor, Gary Oldman, portraying Winston Churchill, did a great job, Winston's got a little bit of lisp accent going on, and I didn't always understand what he was saying, which was actually one of the plot points in the movie. Difficult for the transcriber in that movie to create transcriptions for his speeches. But you know what? Let's talk about things that are easy to create transcriptions for, different services that you can do that with. I'll first talk about the ones that we have used personally. The one that we use for this episode of Ask Brady, for instance, every single episode of Pro Church Daily is the company Rev.com, R-E-V. Chris will not care about this suggestion because it is not inexpensive. It costs $1 per minute of footage, of yeah. audio for them to transcribe. But what's great about Rev is how accurate they are. You know, like 90 to 99% yeah. accurate. You know, sometimes they put the word story tape as two separate words. It's not, it's one word. Sometimes they put pro church tools and they put pro church together into one word. It's not. Yeah, don't go. I understand I'm arbitrarily putting words together or adding spaces between <laughs> words. So it's probably not up to Rev to know the difference between those. Very accurate, not entirely affordable. We looked at something that was more affordable using AI. And the great thing about the transcription industry uh, captions is that these are only going to become more affordable as AI services become more intelligent and become more accurate when it comes to transcriptions. Eventually, we'll only use AI if you are a transcriber like the woman in the Winston Churchill movie. She won't have a job because she's not alive, but also because she would not have a job in this industry within a decade, probably, for sure. We used a company called Trint, Mm T-R-I-N-T, and I think they cost, do do you remember the price of that at all? I don't remember. 
I think it, it was, was around super cheap though compared to Rev. Yeah, yeah. So like way more affordable than Rev. I think between like ten and thirty cents a minute. Yeah. I think that sounds about right. Um, and and they were they were great, but not nearly as accurate. And what we found was we had to go in and make so many changes ourselves within their editor that it wasn't worth the savings because it just took, you had to pay us to do it. i didn't have to pay jennifer the transcriber i had to pay roxanne the transcriber and roxanne gets paid more than jennifer so that you know that just didn't make sense those are the two that we've used i've done some research beyond that and there are a couple of different options one that i saw come up again and again is called happy scribe Ooh. they cost i think one cent per minute and they are an AI-driven automated transcription. And when I looked up the kind of accuracy ratings, again, I haven't used this personally, but for the purposes of Chris's question, did the research, it looked like they were pretty highly acclaimed, well-regarded when it came to the accuracy of their transcriptions. Another option is to upload your video and have YouTube caption it automatically. Again, you'll probably get about 70 to 75% accuracy in this instance. Right. But what you can do using YouTube is get captions 100% for free. You can then go into the video settings and you can export, according to Google's documentation, an SRT file from the video and that SRT file can then be uploaded to Facebook. The right. SRT file is the extension .SRT for a transcripted, uh, transcribed caption file one that is not only a transcription of the video but a timed transcription of the video it knows to show this part at this time when this person is saying it within the video there is a difference between a transcription and captions so for right. instance for this episode of pro church daily the ask brady show we will get it transcribed and then separately get captions for it. that's right right Joe? Yep. yeah we do we get both right so we'll get a transcription and captions. So we'll pay twice. The transcription will go at ProChurchTools.com in the post itself, and the captions will be uploaded to YouTube and Facebook. So you can do this automatically on YouTube for free. You just gotta be okay with, let's say, 70% accuracy. But what is cool is, as far as I know from the independent research that I did, you can export an SRT file from YouTube, which is very nice of them because yeah. they've given you free captions, and then they're not even locking you into only having those captions on their platform. They'll let you export them. Yeah, that's super great. You can do a similar thing on Facebook. They have an automatic uh, caption tool, but I believe that you can only use it if you are putting money into the post, boosting it, putting ad spend there, which you could just spend to get it captioned in the first place. So right. that's not going to work. Final one that came up again and again, I would say the name isn't great. It's Spext. S-P-E-X-T, Spext. Uh, you can look that up on Google for some good things about them. Again, AI-driven captions. What I would do if you were, uh, what I would do if I was, if I would, what I would do if I were you, right. comma, Chris, <laughs> is I would take a video and upload it, uh, the audio, upload the audio to Happy Scribe, YouTube captions, and Spext, and spend the 20 bucks it's gonna take to do each of those three, compare them, see which one is best, and then figure out which one works best for you when it comes to your budget, their accuracy, and then also the turnaround time, how fast they can get it to you and what you need for your production schedule, and then go with that. Trent and Rev, Rev is gonna be too expensive, I think. Trent is gonna be too inaccurate. Hopefully, out of those three remaining options, you can find something that is gonna be accurate enough and affordable enough. You're not gonna get the best of the best when it comes to accuracy. You're not gonna get the best of the best when it comes to turnaround, but you are gonna get the best of the best when it comes to price. And at the end of the day, with every creative decision that we make, we've only got three variables that we're working with. Speed, quality, and price. You can't have all three, you gotta pick two. It's true. I didn't realize that you were somebody who watched films with captions. I do that all the time. I hate watching things without captions. I, I just, I want to make sure I don't miss anything. Right? And Same. movies have such a, a wide dynamic range when it comes to audio, right? It's like, when it's loud, you're like, oh, I got to turn it off. I got a kid <laughs> sleeping upstairs. And then when it's quiet, you're like, what? <laughs> Sorry, speak up. Yeah. All right. Question two comes from Walker and he sent in a video. Hey, Brady. Got a quick question for you from Texas. Pertaining to .org versus .com or .whatever. Uh, our our church currently has a .org, and I was curious, in your mind, if uh, a .com 
was better, uh, if it makes you more legitimate in the viewer's eyes or, or if it didn't matter at all. And then also, if it does matter, uh, but someone has your .com name, would it be better to still switch to a .com and go with a you know a different name for your you know go with your acronym or something, or uh, stick stick with your .org or um, you know any, or any mix of the of the two or whatever. Anyways, I sure appreciate all your input and all the stuff that y'all do up there. Uh, thanks, Pro Church Nation. Thanks for the question, Walker. With domain suffixes, domain name extensions, dot com, dot org, dot church, dot co, dot net, dot us, dot ninja, dot sumo, dot pizza. <laughs> we own the uh, we own the domain millennial dot pizza. By the way, we just needed that one. We also own the domain Niagara dot church. Really, because I didn't know that. Yeah, like when I looked it up, it was available, and I was like, you know what? Every single church in Niagara. This is on you. This is my domain now. We're Do just I, proving a point. <laughs> look, if I ever launch a church in Niagara, I got the domain. Also, if I ever launch a pizza joint for millennials, I've got that domain covered as well. Millennial.pizza. <laughs> Come back from that. There are a number of different things to consider. I wish I knew Walker's actual domain right now and right. what he was thinking about so that way I could offer some more specialized advice but when it comes to ranking domain suffixes obviously .com is always preferred if you can get nucleus.com which is owned by a telecommunications company in Calgary Alberta Canada one day I will buy it from them because <laughs> that website is trash and I need it that's preferred if your .com isn't available a dot org is very respectable and yeah. definitely for churches a great alternative. Dot org is great. I would say in order, dot com would be number one, dot org would be number two, and then with a church, dot church would probably be number three. From there, you've got other possibilities. You could go dot co. Uh, yeah. That's that's one that I I'm a personal fan of, though it can be confused with dot com. Ones I don't like dot net. .NET just seems really yeah. old and gross. I don't know why. Not a huge fan. I think it reminds me of like an, an email address my parents used to have or something. Yeah, yeah. Like oh, quicksnet.net. Net. Oh, what? Yes, it was an email company. I'm Quix, sure of it. Quicksnet? Quicksnet.net. And Quix wasn't spelled like quick. Like with what? A it was with an X? I'm pretty sure it was an X. No. Yes. You make up a word. <laughs> And then you don't even spell the two independent words correctly. No, because it was the 2000s. Obviously, everything had to have like fake letters in it. <laughs> if it was today, it would be like Quicksnet Lee. <laughs> <laughs> of course, from there, you get to the question. Like, Let's say your church is you know, First Baptist Church. And you're in a whole heap of trouble because firstbaptist.com is yeah. taken, firstbaptist.org is taken, firstbaptist.church is taken. And then you get into the classic world of acronyms. Churches, we love our acronyms. We and do. for a lot of churches, we're in a tough spot because we're First United Methodist Church. Yeah. And so we're already FUMC before we even have our city in there. We're not even yet First United Methodist Church of Niagara. Now, if you were First United Methodist Church of Niagara, great domain, niagara.church. Psych, I own it. Oh, I'm not wait. giving it to you. <laughs> But if you are part of a denomination like that, you're already in trouble because, you know, you are Niagara FUMC. Yeah. And so let's imagine, hypothetically, because we don't know Walker's unique situation, that his .com is taken. Let's also assume that his .org is taken. So now he's in... Actually, no, let, let's not assume that. Let's assume the .com is taken only. And he has the choice between what he would like to have with .com, but instead with .org... Or stick with a .com, but inject an acronym instead right. of his preferred beginning. And this is a very difficult toss-up. I do have some rules when it comes to acronyms, or at least highly suggested guidelines for domain names and acronyms. You don't want to have an acronym that's more than four characters. You do not want to have an acronym that has a number in it. It's just too confusing. Do I spell it? Do I type the number? I don't know. I don't know why <laughs> domains continue to do this. Because every single time you say your domain until the end of time, you're going to have to be, oh, by the way, that's the number one. <laughs> or you'll have to buy both domains and then redirect it. But every yeah. time someone types that in, they're going to think, is that the number four? Or is that the word four? And is it yeah. F-O-U-R? Or is it F-O-R? <laughs> wow. Don't use the number four don't, in any way. Just avoid it. 
So that leaves you with a four character acronym. And truthfully, I would never go beyond a three character acronym unless two of the letters in your four character acronym are identical. Right. For instance, the NCAA. Right. I would prefer NBA, NFL, NHL. If you have to go four letters in your acronym, ideally two of the letters would be identical and consecutive in the order. Right. So ABAB does not count. No. It'd have to be like ABCC, ABCC.org. Nice. Truth. So in the toss up between the acronym and with the dot com versus the good name and the dot org. Like I said, I can't give specialized advice without knowing Walker's unique situation, but I think that I hate acronyms enough that I would suggest going with the dot org. Dot org is a specialized enough domain that you're good. Like it, it's 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 well respected. It's yeah. not weird. Everyone knows it. It's not going to be confusing. I would go with that. The so if you're if you were Good News Church and GoodNews.com was taken, but GoodNews.org was available. I would get that in a second. And the other thing to consider with acronyms is that every single industry uses acronyms. So abcc.com, that ain't available. That's true. So then you get into like abccniagara.com. You get into abccjsl.com. I have seen domain names that use suffixes that are acronyms on their own. I'm trying to think of an example of an acronym suffix. Oh, well, this one wasn't the exact example, but there is a suffix in the domain world, XYZ. Right. They're yeah. trying to replace .com. They think XYZ, it's like the alphabet from you know A to Z. I really like XYZ. I tried to get Brady.XYZ. Some other Brady took it. Eh, good for him. If your domain name is like, let's say, you, I have seen this. I have seen like eight, seven, nine character acronyms. So let's say you are a First United Methodist Church. Right. And you are serving in like Baltimore, Maryland. Okay. If your domain name is bmfumc.xyz, just quit church. Just <laughs> shut the church down. It's over. <laughs> no one will ever be able to navigate to that domain. So uh, no. going with an acronym on a .com is a great idea if it's available. Because there are three rules when it comes to domain names. You want to keep them short, memorable, and easy to spell. ABCC.com is a great domain. Yeah, it's a four-letter acronym, but it's short, it's memorable, and it's easy to spell because you actually spell it out when you say it out loud. Right. If you get to a five-letter domain, you know, we are ABABZ.com, it's like, that's still not bad because it's so short, but it's like you're venturing into dangerous territory. You combine an acronym with a real name, NiagaraFUMC.com, eh, Again, I just don't think that's the best option. It's not bad, but it's not great, especially because when you include proper nouns in domains, they are local to churches, so they're not as likely to be misspelled as if it was right. a global domain. But, you know, I don't know how to spell Poughkeepsie. I don't know either. Poughkeepsie, <laughs> F-U-M-C dot com, there's no hope. <laughs> Even if you live in Poughkeepsie. Even Niagara is, like, hard for people because of the extra A in Yes, there. Niagara. Like, yeah. Very difficult. Yeah. So... Acronyms are bad. Keep them four letters or less. If they're four letters, ideally, they have two identical and consecutive letters. .org, just as respectable as .com. .com, I would give a slight edge to. You want to use an acronym and a .com, it's probably unavailable. So most likely, based on the limited information that we have now for Walker, I would go with his preferred domain, .org. If you can't go with that, .church, .ninja. <laughs> As the follow-up. <laughs> Millennial.pizza. <laughs> All right. Question three comes from Gabriel, and he sent in a video. Hey, Brady. Hey, Roxanne. Gabriel here from Australia. Just a question about the Facebook apocalypse. I noticed on Instagram you said it's really nothing to be worried about. I kind of feel like it's a potential opportunity for churches just because the nature of church being very communal and social. But what do you think? Thanks for the question, Gabriel. We did a dedicated episode of Pro Church Daily on this, episode number 13. You can head over to that. We talked about three ways that you can combat the new Facebook algorithm of 2018, that update. I just We can reiterate a couple of those things. You know, this comes directly from Mark Zuckerberg's statement on this. He says, you will see less public content like posts from businesses, brands, and media. 
So if you are a church, just prepare yourself. Your reach is going to decrease. And the follow-up to that is, Zux says this, content should encourage meaningful interactions between people. As churches, it's very easy for us to sit back and say, woe is me. Mm-hmm. Compared to the average company, business, or organization, we've got less money, less skills, less resources, less time. Let's just say. Some of those things may not necessarily be true. Churches have so many advantages, though, yeah. over other industries. And one of them is that church as a whole is based entirely upon the foundation of community, family, and friendship. It's in your vision statement, church. It's in your mission statement. And yet when I go to your Facebook page, everything is a promotion for your upcoming sermon series, yep. Grave Digger. Of course. If we as churches, as Gabriel aptly suggests, and he is 100% correct about, take the opportunity that Facebook is giving us, we can be one of the few industries that actually excels within this new update. Mm -hmm. If you're a realtor, if you are a lawyer, if you are a medical professional, orthodontist, chiropractor, dentist, Mr. Dentist is gonna have a little bit of trouble fostering (laughs) meaningful interaction. (laughs) Sup, girl? Nice teeth. Like we're, all, like, we're already trying to avoid them. So. Yeah, like I don't want any interaction with my dentist. I definitely don't want it to be meaningful. <laughs> that's so weird. Yes, it is. See, exactly. That's the point. Whereas churches, we're we're a family here. We're a, we're you know we're all friends here. Community, churches baked in to what we do every single week is exactly what Facebook is looking for with this new algorithm update. Mm -hmm. If you want a deep dive into the algorithm update, you can head to Pro Church Daily episode number 13 where we talk about three ways you can combat it. One of those three ways is exactly that. You as a church have an advantage that most industries don't. So take advantage of that advantage and realize that We as churches have so much going for us that other industries don't. Not only do we have an advantage when it comes to the type of content that we can produce online, we have an advantage when it comes to producing content at all. Church is based around every single week coming up with new content. Again, the dentist is screwed. (laughs) He has no new content every single week. Just the real estate estate agent, no new content. The lawyer, (laughs) no new content. The chiropractor. No new content. The orthodontist. Maybe we tighten the braces, but no new content. Churches every single week are creating new worship sets, new messages, new announcements. And every single week, our entire community gets together to hang out. You can take photos. You can create polls. You can do so many things that promote engagement based on the way that Facebook has told us they want it to be. Mm -hmm. Now, with all that being said, this algorithm update is very new. We don't know definitively too much about it, but based on the exact statement from Mark Zuckerberg's post on his Facebook page, we can only guess and do as much as we can based on what he said now. And I think churches are in a good place to respond. Yeah, I agree. All right, last question comes from Elliot. And he says, what's the best way to put sermon audio on a WordPress site? What plugin do you use on the Pro Church Tools site? Thanks. Thanks for the question, Elliot. We on the ProChurchTools.com site have an audio player baked in directly to the code. Before that, we used the Smart Podcast Player from Pat Flynn. Definitely a great idea for your website. When it comes to the actual hosting, I'll make this short and sweet, this response. We host all of our videos on YouTube Mm -hmm. because it's the second biggest search engine in the world and we want more people to watch our videos. So we host our videos where everyone watches videos. I love you, Vimeo, but nobody really watches you there. Hell no. Wow. (laughs) Roxanne cursing on the 50th episode of Ask Brady. (laughs) This is what we can expect going forward. (laughs) <laughs> Rocks and dropping curses left, right, and center. And then finally, when it comes to audio, we host our audio on Libsyn, L-I-B-S-Y-N. That is the short form for Liberated Syndicate, I do believe, put That's together. What you said, yeah. Libsyn. Either that or I've just created that in my head. <laughs> it's not that at all. That's where we host our audio. They're great for that. They've got statistics and they syndicate that content to Apple Podcasts, to Google Play to Spotify even. They helped us get the Pro Church Podcast inside of Spotify. You can listen to the Pro Church Podcast directly within Spotify. Just I didn't know that. You didn't know that? I didn't know that. How many times have I posted that on my Instagram story? Sister, you're not watching those? Apparently, I'm like clicking through on those. Roxanne's (laughs) looking through those going, hell no, hell no, (laughs) 
<laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Libsyn is great for hosting. They're super affordable. They syndicate to every place you could want your podcast to be. And they even have a podcast player themselves. It's not great, but they give you the embed code that you could put directly right. onto your website if you want it. That does it for this vulgar episode, the 50th episode of the Ask Brady Show. If you want your question answered, you can send in a video to the aforementioned Roxanne to the email hello at prochurchtools.com. When you send in your video question, we will prioritize your video question. It will be sent immediately to the top of the queue. Mm -hmm. All of uh, all the other questions, they got to wait for you. Truth. Hello at prochurchtools.com is the place to send that. You can also send in written questions to the same email or publicly on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, or Facebook with the hashtag Ask Brady. We'll find it and we will put you into the queue for a future episode of the Ask Brady Show. Thanks for watching, Pro Church Nation. We love you. Hope you're enjoying this daily content as much as we are creating it yep. for you. So fun. Go seize the 167. We'll talk to you real soon.